I am Pradeep Sindhu, co-founder and CEO of Fungible. Today, I'm excited to tell you about a new technology breakthrough called the Fungible DPU. But first, I'd like to say a few words about Fungible. Our mission is to revolutionize the performance, economics, reliability, and security of scale-out data centers. The core technology that we're going to use to accomplish this is called the Fungible DPU, a new category of microprocessor and its associated software. It is important for me to set the context for the invention of the DPU, because we may not share the same assumptions about what problems are important in data centers. Here is a summary of the key problems we believe are facing scale-out data centers. First is that their footprint in terms of power and space is way too large. These data centers have trouble scaling to very small as well as very large deployments. Because of technology limitations, the complexity of managing these data centers is exploding. And finally, the security problem is still unsolved. In addition to these problems, data centers are also facing additional headwinds. First, the network and storage performance is increasing much faster than the performance of compute. Secondly, applications need access to ever larger data sets. Thirdly, Moore's law is slowing down and will eventually plateau. And finally, the security attacks are becoming increasingly frequent and more sophisticated. Now, the complexity of dealing with these headwinds threatens to undo the agility and economic benefits of scale out. We believe data centricity will drive the next generation architecture. We call this architecture hyper disaggregated. In this architecture, there are a small number of server types. For example, general purpose compute x86 servers, GPU servers, SSD servers, and hard drive servers. Each server is powered by a DPU, which connects to standard IP over Ethernet network. This fundamentals-based approach required us to confront the root causes of problems in data centers. There are two really important problems. The first one is inefficient execution of data-centric computations inside nodes. Examples of data-centric computations are the network stack, the storage stack, the virtualization stack, and the security stack. Second one is inefficient data interchange between nodes. There are three other problems which are also important, and these are unreliability, inflexibility, and insecurity of the infrastructure. The fungible DPU's design addresses all five root causes in a single device, and this is really important. First of all, it performs data-centric computations at least an order of magnitude more efficiently than existing engines. It implements very efficient interchange of data between nodes in a data center. It provides fundamental improvements to the reliability of network and storage. It supports strong end-to-end -end security. And finally, it is fully programmable. Now, you may be wondering where the fungible DPU sits in a data center. Well, it sits inside each server. Inside the compute nodes, it complements CPUs and GPUs, respectively. In storage nodes, it connects to SSDs and hard drives. Now, each server through the DPU connects directly to a standard IP over Ethernet network. And very significantly, the DPU implements the endpoint of what we call true fabric. The remainder of this talk focuses on the first of two DPUs we have built, the F1 DPU. The fungible DPU consists of eight data clusters, a control cluster, some memory and I.O. interfaces, and a very fast on-chip network. The data clusters do the actual work of data path. They have 192 general purpose CPU threads, which are fully cache coherent, 
These threads are very tightly integrated with a set of carefully chosen accelerators. The control cluster itself is designed to run standard Linux. It has eight processor threads and it contains a secure complex. The memory and I.O. interfaces on one side connect to PCI Express. On the other side, they connect to a standard Ethernet network. And the external memory is of two types. Standard high capacity memory, which is built using DDR4, and then high bandwidth memory, which is built using HBM. Now diving into the data cluster itself, the data cluster, of course, uh, runs the data path. It contains six cores, each core having four threads. These are simultaneous multi-threaded cores. There are also six accelerators. These accelerators are very tightly coupled to the general purpose CPUs. And they're also multi-threaded, heavily multi-threaded. And the accelerators are responsible for data movement, data lookup, data security, data reduction, data protection, and data analytics. Turning to the control cluster, the control cluster runs the control plane on the DPU. It has four cores, each which is two-way, simultaneous, multi-threaded. Now, the control cluster has very, very strong primitives for security. These include a secure enclave, which is responsible for secure boot, for storing keys, private keys securely, so a secure key vault, it is also responsible for signing and authenticating binary files. So before any program can be run on the DPU, it has to be assigned binary. There is also a public key engine, which implements RSA and elliptic curve algorithms. There is a true random number generator, and there is also a physically unclonable function, which prevents theft of intellectual property. Turning to some more details on CPUs, caches, and external memory, the CPUs are MIP64. It's a nine-stage, dual-issue, four-way, simultaneously multi-threaded pipeline. This pipeline also has a floating point and a SIMD unit. The IPC on data-centric workloads, along with switching threads every few hundred nanoseconds, is close to 1.5. These CPU cores support full hardware virtualization. They have large layer one and layer two caches. The layer two cache is shared, and there is full system-wide cache coherency. And each of these CPUs or CPU clusters is connected to both a high capacity and a high bandwidth memory. The host engine is also very high performance at 512 gigabits per second full duplex. Uh, and it's also very flexible. There are 16 independent dual mode controllers. Each controller can be an endpoint or a root complex. When it is an endpoint for an x86 ARM or other CPU, it provides hardware virtualization, SIRIOV, and here it has 64 physical functions and 1024 virtual functions. It also supports very fine grained QoS support all the way to the CPUs. It also provides full software flexibility where network functions, storage functions, and security functions can be fully virtualized. When a controller functions as a root complex, it provides a high performance abstraction layer, which is able to do fully flexible data and control plane operations. And it connects to and abstracts devices like SSDs, GPUs, and FPGAs. The network engine is a very fast 800 gigabits per second full duplex engine. It's also very flexible and very significantly the DPU implements the endpoint of what we call True Fabric. True Fabric is a network technology that provides some fundamental attributes that are needed. And these attributes include full cross sectional bandwidth, low latency, low jitter end-to-end -end congestion and error control, and strong security. One of the key innovations in the fungible DPU is a novel model for programming data paths. Now, in this picture, you can see that there are many, many, many 
software data threads. These threads run on the MIP64 CPUs. And then there are also many, many accelerator threads. And these two different types of threads are connected by a very high performance any-to-any on-chip call continue fabric. Now these primitives implement an abstraction that we call a dynamic data flow graph. And this abstraction is absolutely the key to executing data-centric computations at very, very high speeds and with full flexibility. Now, what we have measured is that this particular model is capable of providing between 10 and 20 times the performance of any other engine available today. So the Fungible DPU comes with a complete software stack. Starting with the DPU itself, at the bottom is the FunOS Nucleus, which provides basic functions like timers and memory management. On top of that are five separate data plane stacks, network storage, virtualization, security, and analytics. On the control plane side, we have Linux, which runs on top of a very thin hypervisor we call Funvisor. And you have agents uh, that run on top of Linux. Moving on to the software that runs on the x86, which is attached to the DPU in some cases. We have drivers and agents running at low levels. And then on top of that, we have drivers which might be running inside virtual machines. Finally, there is a set of software which runs on general purpose CPUs. It's a centralized software called Cluster Services. And this Cluster Services allows us to manage and deploy large numbers of DPUs which are running inside storage servers and compute servers. Next, I want to provide you some performance data for the F1 DPU. Some of these numbers are measured and some of these numbers are estimated. For TCP, we can do a single flow at 50 gigabit per second full duplex and the aggregate, we can do 250 gigabits per second termination for TCP. For TLS, the session rate is 32,000 sessions per second. Stateful firewall at 370 gigabits per second. The OVS functionality at 400 gigabits per second. A load balancer at 256 gigabits per second. Block store read at 8 million blocks per second. These are 4K blocks. Video streaming at 256 gigabits per second. And selected elements of the TPC Edge benchmark at anywhere between three to 100 times faster than these benchmarks run on x86. This slide shows the performance of True Fabric. We've actually selected three separate configurations where we want to demonstrate the latency under full load. In all three cases, we have 1,024 nodes. On the left-hand side case, uh, it's the most innocuous case where each node is talking to a different node. In the middle case, you have each node randomly picking a node and sending a packet. And finally, the last configuration is where 1,023 nodes are talking to a single node. As you can see, in all three cases, the latency numbers themselves for all three configurations are in the one to two microsecond range. The utilization of the network is greater than 90%, and the ratio of the P99 latency to the mean latency is respectively 1.16, 1.57, and 1.02. These numbers are truly stunning. We talked a lot about the F1 DPU, which is designed to sit inside a storage target, it can also sit inside an AI compute server or a security appliance or an analytics appliance. Today, I'm very happy to announce our second DPU, the smaller S1 DPU, which is designed to go on a PCI Express card and to implement bare metal virtualization, storage initiation, NFV applications, and node security better than any other silicon which is available today.
You're all familiar with CPUs and GPUs. Well, now welcome the fungible DPU. The architecture of this fungible DPU is multi-core MIMD with tightly coupled accelerators. It provides very high throughput for multiplexed workloads. The fungible DPU implements true fabric, which by itself advances the state of the art in networking. And overall, the DPU can perform data-centric computations somewhere between 10 times and 20 times more efficiently than CPUs or GPUs. We believe the fungible DPU is the third socket after CPUs and GPUs, and it will carry data centers for the next decade. So finally, in conclusion, I would like to take pains to emphasize that we're not only building chips and low-level software, but we're using this core technology to build systems and solutions to improve data centers. Please stay tuned for news on these systems. Thank you for your time. We look forward to engaging with you.